in three dimensional modeling we create a 3d representation of an actual or a conceptual object using the various tools available in a 3d modeling software in autocad software we use solid surface and mesh modeling techniques to create a 3d model in this tutorial video i'll explain the procedure to create this aroma pot using surface modeling techniques then we will light up and render this model after specifying suitable materials and hence this is a comprehensive tutorial which deals with 3d modeling and rendering and by the time you complete this tutorial you will get this output so let's get started Please do subscribe to my YouTube channel Sabir Kad if you haven't subscribed already and hit the bell icon and click on all to get instant updates on my future video uploads. Thank you. In surface modeling we can revolve a profile about an axis to create a revolved surface. Over here I have created this particular profile using a polyline and I'm going to use this polyline as the axis. Now I'll show you how I have created this profile. I'll start with the polyline and I'll start from a point somewhere over here. Then I'll pick a point over here as a second point. I'll right click, go to arc option, then right click and I'll click on second point option and I'll pick a second point somewhere over here. Then I'll pick the end point here. Next I'll click on one more point to complete the arc. Then one more point over here, then right click and click on line option and turn on the ortho mode and pick a point somewhere over here to complete the line then give an enter next we have to smoothen this particular corner for that i'll use the fillet command and click on radius option and pick two points to specify the radius and this is the first object to fillet and this is the second object to fillet next i'll click on offset command and i'll give an offset distance of 0.15 then I'll select object to offset and side to offset. Next I'll connect these two endpoints using another polyline. And I'll connect these two endpoints on top using an arc. So click on arc command and click on three point option. And this is a start point and second point and the end point. Now you can join all these segments to convert as a single profile. So I'll click on this fly out in the modify panel and I'll click on join command and I'll select all these profiles and give an enter. Now it's a single object. So this is how this profile is created. And this vertical line is another polyline that can be used as an axis. I'll erase this. Now I'll click on surface tab and click on a revolve command. Now I'm asked to select the object to revolve, which is this profile, give enter. Now I'll use the object option to define the axis. Since object being the default, so you can just give an enter and select this polyline as the axis. Now I'll click on the home icon to switch over to the southwest isometric and this is how the pot will appear. Next I'll create perforations or holes on this pot in the shape of this profile. And these profiles are created using polylines. I've created one profile, then I took a copy of it, then I performed a rotation then that particular rotated profile is mirrored onto the side likewise this entire profile is created and this circle is created using the circle command you can download the initial profile which was used to create the spot as well as this particular profile from the website sabircat.com you can open that drawing file and you can use these profiles to create this project in surface modeling there is a project geometry option and this option will let you project a geometry onto a surface. A geometry can be projected using three options out of which the first one is project to UCS. We already have the XY plane over here and I'm going to project this profile onto the XY plane. So I'll click on project to UCS option. Now I'm asked to select the curves or points to be projected. I'll select all these profiles then give enter. Now I'm asked to select the surface onto which you want to project. I'll click the surface. Now you can see that this profile is projected onto the surface and you can also see the projection in the opposite side. I'll undo this operation. 
Now I am going to try uh, the project geometry option after activating the auto trim. When the auto trim mode is on, the projected geometry will create a cutout on the surface. So I'll click on project to use option. Now I must select the curves. I'll select these curves using a standard window. Give enter. Now I am asked to select the surface. I'll click on the surface. The moment you click on the surface, a cutout is created in the shape of the curve or profile. And you can also see the same cutout in the opposite side. And hence the project geometry tool with auto trim mode activated is a powerful option and can give you interesting results on a surface model. Next I'll erase this profile and I'll create a box under the pot so that the pot will rest on the box. So I'll click on erase command and I'll erase this profile. Then I'll change the view to the top. Then I'll click on solid then box. I'll pick the first corner over here and the opposite corner over here. Now I'm asked to specify the height. I'll just pick a point to specify the height. Now I'll change my view to the front view. Now I'll move the box to adjust its position. I'll pick a point somewhere over here as the base point. Then I'll keep the cursor in the downward direction. Then I'll pick a point over here. Now I'll change my view to the southwest isometric view. Now we have completed the 3D modeling part of this tutorial. Next we will see the rendering part. The rendering engine in AutoCAD is enhanced since AutoCAD 2016 version. Now we have a number of environment presets and optimized options in rendering. This is a typical exterior view of a residence rendered using AutoCAD. This is the rendered view of the interior of this residence in daylight. This is how the same space will appear when the lighting is changed from daylight to artificial lights. You can learn all this and much more from an online course which I offer. Please click on the link provided at the description section of this video to know more. Now let's continue with the rendering part of this tutorial. Next I'll assign the various materials for the box as well as for the pot. I'll click on visualize tab then I'll click on material browser and right click on the global material then I'll click on duplicate and I'll name this material as pot mat since it's a pot material. Then double click on it. You will get the materials editor. You have a color by object option over here. Click on this arrow and click on the color option and you can click on this color swatch and I'll create a particular color for the pot and that is this yellowish porcelain color. I'll give OK. Next I'll assign this material to the pot. So select the pot, right click and assign to selection. Now I'll create another material for the box. Again select the global material, right click, duplicate and I'll call it as base material. Double click on it. I'm going to assign a texture for the base and it's not a plain material. So I'll click on this image option and I'll click on the flow tile material and I'll give open. Now you can see the preview of that material here. Now I'll click on reflectivity and I'll reduce the direct parameter from 50 to 30. Next I'll assign this material to the box. So select the box, right click and assign to selection. Now the texture is not visible. If you want to see the texture, you have to turn on the materials and textures option. Just click on that. Now you can see the texture. This texture has got a number of tiles. Now I would like to increase the number of tiles in this texture. For that I'll double click on the image swatch and here I have uh, the sample size option. The default value is 12. I'll change the value from 12 to 4 and give enter. Whatever is given for the width will also be applicable for the height since the aspect is locked. Now you can see that you have more number of tiles on the texture. Now let's go for a rendering. So I'll close this palette. I'll change the render resolution to 1280 by 720 which is the HD resolution. I'll slightly zoom in and I'll click on the render to size button. Now it's rendering. So this is how the rendered output will appear. Now you can see the effect of reflection on the base material and you can also see a shadow 
that's because of the default lighting. But the moment you create an artificial light, the default light will get automatically turned off. So let's create point lights. To create lights, I'll click on create light option in the visualize tab. So when you click on create light, you will get a pop up in which you will see different types of lights. I'll click on point lights. You have two options. You can either turn off the default lighting, which is recommended, or you can keep the default lights on. I'll turn off the default lighting. Now I'm asked to specify a location for the light. I'll shift right click and choose center from the OSNAP menu. And I'll click on the center to locate the light there. Now I'll click on name to name the light. I'll call this light as pot light. Give enter. Now I'll click on attenuation option. Attenuation is the diminish of light intensity with respect to distance. I'll give an end limit value as 5. Now give enter. One more enter. Now this is the light which you have created. Next I'll adjust the position and parameters of this light. I'll adjust the parameters first. For that I'll select the light first. Just click on this arrow at the lower right corner at the lights panel. And here the light will be listed. Right click and click on properties. And here I'll reduce the intensity factor from 1 to 0.15. Then close this palette. Now I'll adjust the position. I'll take a front view. I'll change the visual style to 2D wireframe. Next I'll select and move the light by picking on this grip point. I'll move it straight down and I'll keep it somewhere over here. Now I'll switch over to the southwest isometric view. Change the visual style to realistic. Then I'll go for a rendering. Now you can see the inside of the pot getting lighted up. But there is no light outside. So what I'll do is I'll create a second light by copying this particular light. I'll switch over to the top view. Visual style to 2D wireframe. I'll click on copy command, select this light. I'll pick this as a base point and I'll pick the second point over here. Then I'll switch over to the front view and I'll move it straight up through a certain distance. Next I'll change the properties of this light. So click on visualize tab, click on this arrow. This is the second light which you have created. Click on properties and I'll rename this light as exterior light. Then I'll change the intensity to 0 0.05. Then the lamp intensity to 300. I'll also select the pot light and go to properties and I'll bring down its lamp intensity to 300. Now let's switch over to the southwest isometric view. Change the visual style to realistic and render this view. Now you can see that there is a little bit of light outside. If you want, you can increase the intensity of the outside light a bit more. So I'll click on lights, select the exterior light, go to properties. I'll make it 0.1. Render again to see the change. Next I'll scale this base a bit more. So select the base, right click, change the gizmo to scale gizmo. And you can pick on a particular axis and you can scale it. I'll give the scale factor as 2. Now I'll take a front view. Visual style to 2D wireframe. And move the base slightly downward. I'll go for a perspective view by right clicking at the view cube. Visual style to realistic. Then render again. Now you can see the light coming through the holes in the pot and it's falling on the base. Now I'll save this rendered view. Click on the save icon at the upper left corner and I'll keep the file on the desktop. You can choose from any desired file extension. I'll select JPEG file type and I'll give a file name as pot view. I'll click on save and I'll go for the best quality by moving the slider to the extreme right and I'll give OK. So this is how the rendered output will appear. So that's all about the 3D modeling and rendering of an aroma pot. Hope you liked this tutorial and learned the application of a number of tools in AutoCAD 3D. Please hit the like button of this video if you liked it. Until I catch you 
with another informative video on AutoCAD. Bye-bye and take care. Thank you so much for your time. Peace be upon you all.